What we're going to be going over here is cost, volume, profit analysis, and we're going to be looking at it in terms of a break-even point here. So what we're talking about here for this break-even point, this is where the company is going to have to sell a certain amount of the product they have here in order that they break even here, that their revenues here are going to equal the cost here. So at that break-even point, they're not generating any profit here. Below the break-even point, they're having a generating a loss, above the break-even point they're generating some profit here. So we're going to have to determine that quantity here, that break-even quantity, and then based on that quantity we can determine uh, the profit that the company, we're going to be looking at, determining the profit that the company's be, going to be looking at here. So, and what we're going to do here is go over this graph and then we're going to go look at some generalized solution here to uh, solve for these, this break-even point here. But before we do that, let's go over here and let's look at our reference key and understand what we're doing here. So what we have to do here is we have to determine the quantity of the product that we're going to be selling here. And that I've got defined here as X for the quantity of the product. And we're going to look at it in terms of the units are needed, that are going to be needed here for a target of net income here before taxes and a net income here after taxes. So we're going to be looking at three different situations here, three different cases. First off, we're going to be looking at calculating the targeted net income here before taxes, where we set that net income here, just say it's set to zero. So all we're going to be solving for is the quantity X here. Net income here before taxes, no profit set at zero amount here. Then we're going to look at the case here for the where we have the targeted net income here before taxes. We have some amount set on that some uh, targeted amount here, and then we'll look at it in terms of the targeted net income here after taxes. Okay, so the reference key that we're going to be using here for our solution is going to be here for P is going to equal the unit sales price. That's the per, per unit or per price here that we're selling of the particular product. We're going to be looking at it just in terms of a single product here for calculating those break-even quantities. So P is the price of the product, X here represents the number of the units or the quantity of the product they're going to be selling. And then V here would be the unit variable cost. TFC here, and I got everything sort of color coded so you can follow along with that. So TFC here in red, that would be our total fixed cost. TVC here in blue would be the total variable cost. And then TR or S here, that's our total revenue or sales. And then TC would be our total cost here, both the fixed and the variable cost. And then TCM here would be their total contribution margin. T equals our tax rate. NIBT here in blue would be the net income here before taxes. And then NIAT here in green would be the net income here after taxes. Okay, so let's go back to our cost, volume, profit graph here. So what we're going to do, I've got this, these cost lines laid out on our graph here. So first thing we're going to have here along our x-axis here, bottom axis, we have our units or a quantity that we're going to be looking at here. So on this side here, we right over here on the left side, we have a zero quantity that we have here. And then as we move along the axis, we increase the number of units or a quantity here. And then along our y-axis here would be our dollars amount here, what we'd be looking at here for those different quantities that we're going to be looking at. So when we talk about cost, volume, profit analysis, we've got this first, our fixed cost here. That's that constant amount here, it's constant. It doesn't vary with the quantity that we're selling, but it starts out at a certain amount here that we have of a fixed cost here. And then built on top of that fixed cost here is our variable cost. And that I'm showing here in our blue line. And that's really that variable unit cost times whatever quantity we're looking at, the X quantity. VX here equals our variable cost. But our variable cost starts out where our, our at our fixed cost amount here. So that's our really our total cost. Total cost is our variable cost here plus our fixed cost here. And variable cost here was, the total variable cost was V times X here. So that's our total cost line, this blue one. Then our green line here, that's our revenues line, starts at a zero here and moves up at a steeper rate here than our cost line. So revenues is just that price per unit price times the quantity we're selling. So our total revenues here is just our price times our quantity or PX here. And the difference between our total revenues here and our total variable cost, that is defined as the total contribution margin. Okay, so those are our uh, revenues and cost line. Now for our profit line, we'll be looking at that here. So the net income here before taxes, I'm showing that here in blue. And those are all shifted below our, our, our 
costing lines here. And then our net income here after taxes, I'm showing that dashed here in green. Okay, so we're gonna go and we're gonna go through and determine our generalized uh, solution here to determine these break even points here. All right, so this is what we're gonna, again, we're gonna have to determine the, the number of units or that quantity of units that are needed for that targeted net income before taxes and net income here after taxes. So just, this is the basic concept. Everything falls around this basic uh, cost volume profit concept. We'll look at our concept first here. This is where our total revenues equals our total cost plus the profit. So I've got total revenues TR here equals our total cost plus our profit would be in this case a net income here before taxes. We have some targeted amount here. Then our total revenue total cost is a total fixed cost plus the total variable cost here plus our net income here before taxes. Again, total revenue, and then just rearranging our equation here, we take our total revenues, move our total variable cost over to that this side of the equation here. So total revenues minus our total variable cost equals our total fixed cost plus our net income here before taxes. And then our looking at it in terms of a total contribution margin, that's simply a total revenues minus our total variable cost here. That total contribution margin then just equals our total fixed cost but our plus our net income here before taxes. So this is the concept that we'd be using here. And you can solve those cost volume profit uh, problems just laying it out in this conceptual form here. So everything falls around this, uh, our basic concept here. So looking at our calculations that we're gonna go through here. Total revenues here in green here equals our total fixed cost plus our total variable cost here plus the target and net income here before taxes. So we had that up here. Now, our, our total revenues is really that price PX here, price times the quantity, unit price times the quantity. That equals our total fixed cost here, plus our total variable cost, which is VX here, the variable cost on a unit basis times the X here. And then our targeted net income, we just add, add in here, targeted net income. So now we can rearrange this equation as well here. So PX, total revenue, minus our v minus vx or total variable cost that difference equals you move that vx over to this side of the equation equals our total fixed cost plus our net income here before taxes so now we can factor x out here so the difference between a price a unit price and our variable unit cost here that difference times our x quantity here equals our total fixed cost plus our net income here before taxes so now we can solve for x and just by dividing both sides of the equation here by V minus X by that quantity. So X here, total fixed cost plus our net income here before taxes, divide, divide both sides here by uh, P minus X or price minus the variable cost per unit basis, cancels out here, and then it's just divi divided into total fixed cost plus the net income here before taxes, divided by the price difference price in our variable unit cost here that equals our break-even quantity that we're solving for, given a certain net income here before taxes. Okay, and then of course we have to know our fixed cost as well and all these other variables. Okay, so the first case here, let's go and look at that. So if we set net income here before taxes equal to zero, then X, then that drops out of our equation here and all we end up with is X equals our total fixed cost divided by our unit price difference between our unit price and our variable cost. So that solves for X here when net income here before taxes, we set at zero here, no profit here. Okay, and then the other case here is we're gonna solve for, you can plug it in here to solve for your net income here before taxes. You just plug that in here, that, the X quantity where we had some net income here before taxes. But now let's look at our net income here after taxes. So that really is the difference here between, well, let's say our one minus the tax rate times our net income here before taxes equals our net income here after taxes. Just one minus the tax rate here times net income before taxes. So if we solve for our net income here before taxes, that simply just divide both sides of the equation by one minus T here. So net income here after taxes divided by one minus T here, uh, one minus our tax rate here equals our net income before taxes. So now we can just solve, put, substitute this into our equation up above here. Okay, so we've solved for net income here before taxes in terms of net income here after taxes. So just solve putting that 
this amount up into our equation up here, we're going to get this here. So we just solving for x here for net income here after taxes. Just take your total fixed cost here that we have here and then substitute this amount into here and you're going to get net income here after taxes divided by 1 minus the tax rate, that quantity here. And then that entire quantity here times uh, the difference between your sales price here, unit sales price and variable cost here divided into your quantity here. That's going to give you your break-even quantity here based on a net income here after taxes. Simply, you've seen the substitution that went on here to determine that. Okay, so these are our generalized equations here. And you can use these equations to solve for any of those break-even points here. Okay, so if we go down to our graph once again here. All right, so really what we're looking at, we went over our costing lines here, our fixed cost then our variable cost built upon that. So our, our point here where we had, where we had no units sold, our, we hit for our fixed cost, we have our total fixed cost here, and then it moved up here along the line based on that variable cost rate. But then we had that intersection here between our total revenues and our total cost here. So the break-even point, we, we'd solve for that quantity here. And then to determine the dollar amount, it's just the purchase price here, or unit price here, times the number of units or the quantity we're selling. So that would be our in terms of our break-even dollars here based on zero profit here. Okay, so those are the key points here. Price times the quantity here for that point. Total fixed cost, we start out here based on zero units. That would be our costing amount. And then, again, you can figure out any of your revenue. Once you determine the X here, you can determine your revenues at any point here and your co variable cost at any points, just plug them in here. But now let's go down here and let's look at this break-even point here for a profit. So we got these two different lines. We've got the net income here before taxes and a net income here after taxes. So using our generalized solution for the problems, we can determine these different these different rates and quantities here. So for our blue line here, net income before taxes, we start at zero units here, zero X units here. We start out at the difference is just minus a negative total fixed cost. So we got to cover those fixed costs. We start out with a negative amount here. Just so we start out with the zero amount here, and then below that would just be minus our total fixed cost. We have to move up to this break-even point here before we start generating any profit. Break-even point. And the break-even point was based on that X quantity that we resolved. So again, net income here before taxes, and that is defined here as, I'm showing it here, net income here before taxes equals one, a negative, minus the fixed cost, total fixed cost, just the total fixed cost here, minus the total fixed cost, plus the difference between your uh, purchase price or your unit price here and your variable cost on a unit basis, that difference here times that total X units here. So that's our net income here before taxes. Just plug that in here. Minus our fixed equals minus our fixed cost plus the difference between our sales price, our unit price here and our variable unit cost times the quantity here. So that'll give you at any point here you can determine your a net income here before taxes. But just remember, it's all based on the profit. You only have some profit once you get past this break-even point. Any, any point below that, you're operating at a loss. And then for your net income here after taxes, that dashed line here. So this is the case here where it's going to add zero units or X units, where it's going to cross here for your break-even, or your dollars, dollar amount. It's just one minus the tax rate times the negative amount here, or minus the total fixed cost, total fixed cost, negative amount here. So that that amount here, just take one minus, okay, the uh, targeted net income here after tax is shown in green here, that line, that just equals one minus the tax rate and times this entire quantity here, the net income here before taxes, times the minus the total fixed cost here plus the uh, sales price, unit price here minus the variable cost on a per unit basis times X units here. So n n the uh, targeted net income here after taxes is just taking one minus the tax rate times this uh, uh, net income here before taxes, which was this amount, that entire quantity here. One minus the tax rate times that entire quantity. Just to point out here, this is minus total fixed cost here. That is that point here. Plus uh, the, the 
sales pr unit price minus the variable cost times the number of units sold here. So there you can solve, solving for X, we determine the point here where we would be looking at our different profits here, net income here before taxes, net income here after taxes. Okay, so we've laid out our solution here uh, for this break-even point. And if you go through these formulas that we went through here, and you can uh, under you can determine any of those different uh, costs and or any of those different uh, dollar amounts here based on the X units. You can put once you know those X number of units that you have to solve here, then you can determine your revenues here and your total costs here. And of course, you have to know the sales prices and all those other amounts. But you can determine your break-even point here, and then you can be looking at where you'd have to, the quantity here that you'd have to generate in order to have a profit here for both net income before taxes, net income here after taxes. Okay, so this is our generalized solution for solving for these cost volume profit problems. Just go through the basic arithmetic that we've done here, and you should be able to solve for most of the different problems that would be presented to you.